Good morning, everyone. At this time, we would like to also welcome our online viewers to the service. Um, as I invite the choir forward today, um, continuing with our spirituals, today's anthem is entitled The Gospel Train. I didn't have any time to do any research on this one, but we all think it's got to have some kind of code for the Underground Railroad, probably, but also the message of the Gospel Train coming. Get on board.
So today's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not, on account of the crowd, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. May you see it. Reference means to you and how you choose to implement it within your own life. 
as well as how you could possibly improve it to deepen your relationship with God. Thank you. Good morning, St. John's. And uh, it's my turn. Uh, usually we have just the youth up here, uh, but uh, on this occasion we have uh, adult youth up as well, just based on the turnouts. In terms of a scout being reverent, um, we're reminded to be thankful, certainly through our joys period uh, this morning. We heard a lot of that. And uh, I'm also thankful uh, to share. Um, I'm reminded that this is our 10th charter year, so thank you, St. John's. If my calendar math is correct, this is our 10th charter. This last one being a little more um, tenuous than others, but I think we got through just fine. So certainly thank you, St. John's. Uh, Pastor Dennis, thank you for your leadership as executive here. And Kevin, thank you as charter leader, uh, board rep, as well as our youth leadership. And even further than that, more than that, is our youth leadership, the ones leading this unit. Uh, the, the, uh, the adults are here present just uh, for safety and guidance and instruction. I'll we'll also make mention this time during our sharing that uh, this is the fifth year in a row that uh, the youth did win the Klondike Trophy. So, ever so thankful for that. Um, thankful to be here today and in the uh, church here with Elliot as well uh, to pull out application accounts. <laughs> and uh, looking forward to that. And touching on the Super Bowl, let's see, thankful that Tom Brady and his bunch of Super Bowl rings. I saw. Headed off into the sunset, but most of all, I thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you all for being Thank you. Um, so, when I thought of reverence using Kayla's definition, I thought of two Bible stories how you can give and how you can receive reverence. So, the first one I thought of was when Jesus cleaned his disciples' feet and Peter Crooks, especially after they had been walking on dirt roads and sandals all day. And he cleaned Judas' feet. And he knew Jesus, Judas was going to be the one to betray him. So I think that's an extreme amount of reverence it takes to do that. And another story I thought of was um, when Jesus healed the lepers and only one came back to thank him. And how that one leper had so much more reverence for Jesus than the rest of them combined. So I think that with the help of our amazing group leaders, we can, as scouts, girls, so learn how to give and receive reverence. That's all I have. I'm going to ask the uh, leader this morning to uh, help in our, to talk a little bit about what a scout of cover means to us. I thought, well, let's go to the book and see what the book says. see the beauty, the intricacy, 
the infinite wisdom that went into uh, creating all of the world around us, the universe around us, in which we exist. With me, science doesn't contradict uh, what we know of God and his creation. Uh, it just brings me that much more of a marvel at what, what he's done. I read and understand that uh, if the Earth's declination was just a degree in one one way or the other, off from what it is right now, that our lives could exist. The Earth would be too hot, it would be too cold, the extremes of the seasons would be too much to allow growth of all the things that we uh, are necessary to live our lives. And even our lives themselves, we have difficulty, if not an uh, impossibility for us to uh, to tolerate the extremes and the additional radiation and things like that. So this tells me that there has to be a supreme intelligence that went into creating all these things. And I have no problem at all uh, understanding and uh, acknowledging that there is indeed a supreme being, that there is a creator God, and that this creator God deserves my worship and praise. Good morning. So my name is Barb Shutt. I have the privilege of being the Assistant Scout Master for Girl Troop um, 262, the Fearless First. Um, today, the message is on how I'm reverent in scouting and how scouting has helped me become more faithful. Um, in our handbook, a scout is reverent towards God. A scout is faithful in fulfilling religious duties. A scout respects the beliefs of others. As I reflect on my own personal journey in scouts, I feel that we need to obey and be an example of the two greatest commandments. First is love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. During the numerous years I've been involved in scouting, not only in Scouts BSA, but in also Girl Scouts, I feel that I've tried to come alongside the leaders and the youth in any way possible to assist, help carry their load, and to help build up and encourage them so they can develop confidence and strength in areas that may seem challenging to conquer. Um, I've also tried to develop and refine the characteristics that I think God would have, such as showing love unconditionally and respecting the opinions of others even when they do not align with my own. In my life, I try to always seek God in everything I do so that when others see my actions and hear my words, that I'm representing who God is in my life. Actions speak louder than words, and I truly believe that youth are constantly watching us all the time. So if we want to raise up a generation that seeks and serves God, that we must first be that example that they see. Sometimes we do not realize the impact that words or actions may have on others, but I have personally witnessed in the, the scouting, the leadership and the members of this congregation having a positive influence on the lives of the youth and that they have the privilege of being part of Troop 262. The love of God and His goodness is so evident to me when I witness the willingness of individuals to invest their time and gifts in both the girls and the boys troop. This to me is a beautiful picture of God's family being there for one another. During a very challenging time in my life years ago, I felt as though I had a void within my very being and I just wanted to experience happiness. I attempted to fill that void in many worldly things. I would experience happiness for a short period of time, but I would be off to something else. Then someone shared an acronym for the word joy. The letter J stood for Jesus, the O stood for others, and the Y stood for yourself. If we always put Jesus first, others second, and ourselves, um, ourselves last, um, we'll, we'll truly experience joy. And finally that void was filled within my, uh, 
in, within my life when my eyes were set on Jesus first and I allowed him to be, use me as a tool to bring glory to his kingdom. I no longer felt that void and I had an amazing sense of peace within my life. In a world where everyone has their eyes inward on themselves and not on helping others, the world can become hard and uncaring to others. In scouting, we do numerous service projects to assist others in times of need. This, I believe, develops character and leadership skills and also turns our eyes outward towards others so that we can be the church beyond Sunday mornings. And we want to thank St. John's family for helping us to do that.
Please take time to read this remark again. You should all be so very proud. A big congrats to the once again champions of it all. My guys put in a bunch of time and energy sharpening their skills this season and got close. We have crazy respect for the effort it must take to pull off being in the top spot. Your troops do it right, and you can see the teamwork and leadership it takes to make it all look so smooth in not just one season, every year. It's amazing. I'm slowly building my dynasty. Um, they're, they're all too young yet, which is true. I only had two high schoolers and two full uh, sled teams. My younger team was paired up with your 262 squad. Uh, for a bunch of the stations. They were watching intently how your team was going about things and tried their best to mimic 262's teamwork and intensity. My guys learned a lot just by seeing your team in action. Yeah, there's always next year. It'll be my son's last one, so we'll have to pull out all the stops and get her done. My guys are already creating new sled designs and dreaming of future races. <laughs> Some competition next year. You better. Mm. I know what you're thinking. Don't worry. I'm just going to speak for a few minutes uh, to sort of follow up with what the scouts said and their leaders said uh, because uh, <clears throat> it's good, especially to hear good from good to hear from the scouts on a topic like this and how important God is to their lives and. Uh, it does my heart good. I just wanted to add two things. Scat is reverent. Why we should be reverent. And I'm just going to hit two points uh, here pretty quickly. And, and talk about worship, you know, because reverence leads to worship. And we worship, first of all, because we worship God, because there is nothing greater. There is nothing greater. If I asked you to worship me, come on, bow down and worship me, you know, you would say no, and you should say no, because you would say, you're not that great, you know, you know what? you're not worthy of that. And you'd probably think I was full of myself, that I was full of pride, and that I thought better than, I, that I was better than you, and all those things, rightfully, rightfully so. And yet, Psalm 33, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Praise befits the upright, or as the international version says, it is fitting for the upright to praise the Lord. So God is asking for our worship. Wait, if I ask for worship, it's pride. Is it pride with God if God's asking for worship? Well, no, it's not, because... God is the greatest being there is. Um, so my same Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottom. He puts it deep in storehouses. God created all this. He's the one who made us. Then it says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Right, so God actually, if God told us not to worship him, that would be a lie. Because remember, we need to worship, we're made to worship, and we have to worship something. And so we should worship what's the greatest thing. And if God said, don't worship me, he would be saying he's not the greatest thing when he is the greatest thing. So we worship God because he is the greatest thing and is worthy of our worship. But the second thing I really want to say today is this. Our worship, our worship of God, leads to transformed lives. It changes our lives. Our worship, we don't think about it that way, but changes our lives. Now, many people think what changes your life is learning about things and hard work, and the scouts do a lot of that. Um, I mean, that's why they've won Klondike now five years in a row, and I give their leadership so much credit, because they taught them how to do knots, how to do first aid, how to make campfires, all those things. 
right? And, and they had them practice over and over again so that they got it, so that they know it. But you can learn all that. It can sort of change you in one sense. You know, because now I know how to tie knots and I can tie knots real quick, you know. But you can learn all that. And you can still be a jerk. <clears throat> I, it, you know, it's, in fact, you can win Klondike and be more of a jerk than you were before, because after all, we won Klondike for five years in a row, right? So I think we have to be careful. And, and um, I think, you know, Boy Scouts is all about taking boys and girls and turning them into young men and young women of character. And, and I think, I think the, the leaders would agree that even what's more important than the scouts learning how to tie knots is building character within the scouts. Right? There's plenty of jerks out there. We don't need any more. Okay? We run into them every day. And, and so we need the scouts. This is why I think a scout is reverent and why we need to be reverent. Because the worship of Christ changes our lives, changes your life. So in Luke chapter 19, that story that Cal read for us from Luke 19 about Zacchaeus the tax collector. Now, you have to understand a little something about tax collectors, most of you know this, I understand, but tax collectors were sort of despised people by the Jews. And you have to understand, they were typically Jewish people who worked for Rome. Rome hired them to collect taxes for Rome. And Rome was the enemy. Rome was, Rome was the oppressor. And the only thing I can think to compare it to is imagine that there is a really good high school football player in Pennsylvania, one of the best in the country. And it's time for them to commit to college. And they say, I'm going to Ohio State. What? You traitor? Why would you want to go to Ohio State? You're from Pennsylvania, right? You should go to Penn State, of course, right? So that's just the way I look at it. But I think that's how they looked at these tax collectors. They were traitors. And to make it worse, to make it worse, the way the tax collection system worked was the taxes, and there were several different taxes, a bunch of taxes, actually, and the tax collectors had to collect the certain amount of tax. Let's say per person, there was a certain tax. And they had to collect this and give that to Rome, right? But whatever they could get above that, they could take, get whatever they want above that. And they would often do that and become very wealthy. And Zacchaeus would become very wealthy. Zacchaeus, however, is curious about Jesus. I'm sure he heard about Jesus. So he climbs up in a tree because he's just a short little guy. You know? Remember the song? Remember. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. So so that's that's what we taught the kids. And and uh, Jesus goes by and he sees Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, you come down because I'm having dinner with you. And I'm sure all the other Jews said doesn't Jesus know he's a jerk? Don't go with him, Jesus. But Jesus cares about everybody. And so he goes to Zacchaeus's, and this is what it says. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Zacchaeus is a changed man. Very quickly, too, but because he's been in the presence of Jesus. Because he's been in the presence of Jesus. It's when we're in the presence of Jesus that we change. Jesus says, Today salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. We are changed. So, I'm going to put everybody into three categories. The first category is those 
who can be jerks and they don't care that they're jerks, right? They sort of like it that way, that's who I am, and they might like it that way, other people don't like it that way, but anyways, that's another story. I'm not talking to you because you're, you're doing your thing, you're, whatever, go and do it. The second group of people is people who say, well, I'm never a jerk. I never do things like that. Well, then you're probably one of the biggest jerks there are just because when we don't admit it, you know. And, and I'm not talking to you either. Because, you know, you, okay, you, you can't even see that, so. But the third category is those of us who do things that we know are pretty much like a jerk. Maybe not often, but every once in a while. And we can do those things, and we don't like it, we don't want to change. And how do we change? Oh, we can try to learn, we can try hard work, but you know what really works? Being in the presence of Jesus. Hmm. Reading and studying the Bible. You know, praying, talking to Jesus. Listening for him to speak. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Being obedient to him. When we do these things, we will be changed. We will be changed. Um, I, I know a scout, uh, well, former scout. I know a former scout who became an Eagle Scout, 17 years of age. And the truth of the matter is, he was a nice kid, but he could be a jerk at times, right? Because mostly he just thought about himself more than anybody else, right? And, um, and he tended, tended to have this sort of passive-aggressive streak. He would never say anything mean about anybody, but he would just get in a mood, you know? If somebody did something he didn't like, and he just, mm, and he wouldn't say anything, and he would just, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know if you figured this out yet. I'm talking about myself, right? And I can still be a jerk at times, but much less than I used to. You know why? I hang out with Jesus. I've met Jesus, I know Jesus, I worship Jesus. And even the better part, why I'm not a jerk as much as I used to be, I hang out with Jesus' people. People who love Jesus. And I am totally convinced that people who love Jesus have the most fun of all. I truly think this is true. And um, so, so that's what, you know, that's what this is about. Um, we, the scouts, if we really want to change, it's not about trying harder, it's about who we're with, hanging out with Jesus, and hanging out with his people. Father God, indeed, we are, we're just so thankful, Father. We're so thankful for the scouts for them being here this day, but especially we're so thankful that you are changing their lives through your son's presence and power. And you are changing our lives. Even though some of us have known Jesus for a long time, we still have a little ways to go. And you are changing our lives as well. So Father God, we just say thank you for your presence, but may we just be open to what Jesus is doing in name and deed experiencing and through worship and experience of Jesus we may find our lives changed praise be to God praise be to God Amen
Christ, and all of his just, be with us until we meet again.